In this video, let's learn about the required root parameters. So far in our application, and also when we learn about HTTP, we have these endpoints. And the path is really just slash employees. And they're all the same. Now, when it comes to the delete method and try to get a particular employee information, we had to use query string. So let me show you what we used before. We use slash employees with a question mark and ID equals to one. So this is to say, give me the employee information and which employee exactly is the employee with ID equals to number one. So this helps us target a particular employee. This path can be used in the get method or with delete method. But in this video, we're going to learn something new. Instead of using query string, we're going to use something like this. So slash employees slash one. So this is the same thing. This is the same purpose. We're going to target employee number one. But why? Right? You may ask why we have to do this when we already has a mechanism, which is query string. Well, it has many benefits when we use it this way. This is cleaner, right? The URL is cleaner this way. So if you compare this uh, with this, of course, slash employees slash one is much cleaner than, than the query string, right? And also, it's better for search engine optimization because search engines they actually look at the url and then they consider a url with a query string like this let me show you they typically consider this url and this url are duplicate urls they see the, these are duplicate urls so they kind of ignore some of the urls so if you use slash employee slash one this is going to be completely different from slash employee slash two so if you have a requirement to actually use search engine to index all of these individual employees information then you need to actually use this approach and this is called a root template right so this is a template and it's called root template so try to use root template instead of the query string it's also because it's cleaner so user has a better user experience so because we have this approach then this part of the url becomes a variable that's why we call it the parameter and in sp core in order to make this part a variable we typically use something like this Right. So instead of saying question mark ID equals to something, we're going to say curly brace ID. So this is a template. This particular one is the template. And slash employee slash one or slash two or slash 20, these are the specific value that match that template. Right. So this is the template. And when we use curly brace, the part that is inside the curly brace, it becomes a variable of this path. And we call that a root parameter and specifically this is a required root parameter which means that if you put something like this so let's use the delete method because the delete method already exists i don't have to add an additional one if you say like this then this id here or this part of the url is considered a required part and let's make something clear. There's some terminology here. So first of all, this is called a root template. And the root template has different segments separated by slashes. A slash, and then this is the first segment. And this is the second segment. Okay. The segment that has curly braces are considered root parameters. And the segment that is hard-coded like here, employees, these are hard coded. This is called the literal segment. So again, this is the literal segment. And this is the root parameter and is a required root parameter. So if we have something like this, so let's say slash employees slash position and slash ID. So this means that this part is the literal segment of the root template. 
And then we have two root parameters, two required root parameters. First one is the position. Second one is the ID. So these are the terminologies that we need to be clear. And then we're going to talk about how to match a template. So a endpoint will be defined with a root. And when a request comes in, the URL in the request has to match the root template. That's one of the conditions in order to be mapped to this. And how to map to the root template, the literal part of the segment. So the literal segment has to match 100%, except that it's case insensitive, right? So whether it's a lower E or uppercase E, whether it's a lowercase M or uppercase M, it doesn't really matter, but the letters has to be exactly the same. E-M-P-L-O-Y-E-E. -E -E. So the literal segment has to match 100%. And then you have to provide two segments of variables here. So it doesn't really matter what you provide here. It's going to match to this first segment. We don't have a constraint on this parameter yet. So let's say one and then two. So this URL is going to match this root template because it has three different segments. The first one exactly match the literal part. The second match to position. The third one match to ID. But if you have something like this, this is not going to match this particular root template. And if you have something like this, it's going to match to this particular root template. However, if you have something more like this, again, it is not going to match to this root template. Okay, so let's revert this. So when we say slash ABC slash one, this is going to map to this root template, right? And then the endpoint with this root template will be selected if the method also matches. And once we have a match, the root parameter values will be stored in the context object. Let's take a look. So we're going to have a example like this. So we're going to have slash employees slash ID with just one root parameter. And then we're going to try to use slash employee slash one, try to match to this root template. Okay. So we're going to define this root template just like this in the map delete method here. And then we're going to set a breakpoint right here. And I'm going to run the application. All right. The application is running. We're going to the dummy 404 not found page. That's normal. But what we are going to do is we're going to go to this postman over here. And then we're going to do slash, let's say slash 101. And then I'm going to click on send. So the breakpoint is triggered over here. Now, if we look at the context object over here, and then we're going into the request request. Now we're looking at the request object and there is a root values variable here, or let's say call it property. And you can see that it says count equals one. And if we open this, you can see ID equals one zero one. So what I'm trying to show you here is that once a template is matched, then the parameter value along with the parameter name is going to be recorded in the request object. So again, this is the root template. A HTTP request was just sent to the server through Postman. And it is a HTTP delete method, right? So therefore it matches this root template. Why it matches the root template? Because I specified slash employee slash 101. So this your template is matched. And also because third, the HTTP method also match. Therefore, this endpoint handler is invoked. And also when there is a match, as I mentioned, the root values property in the HTTP context dot request object records, or let's say stores the information about the parameter, the root parameter name and the root parameter value so that our middleware is able to use that information. So let's change our code. 
Try to reflect that. So instead of deleting an employee, I'm going to say delete the employee. Okay, and then I'm going to use string interpolation to specify which employee is going to be deleted. And here, let's remove the breakpoint. And I'm going to say context dot request dot root values. And let me minimize this here. Okay, so I don't need to determine whether root values ID actually exist because this is a required. If it doesn't have a match, it's going to go to the 404 not found, right? So if there's no match, this endpoint handler is not actually going to be triggered. So I don't actually need to try to check whether this parameter and its value actually exist in the root values property here. I know it exists. So I'm going to run it and I'm going to go to Postman, try to execute it again. So this time maybe let's change to 102 and then click on send. All right, we got a 200 OK status code and then I got a HTTP response body that shows me delete the employee 102. So this is the correct HTTP response body that I am expecting. Okay, so let's try something else. Let's try to go over here. And then if I say, okay, I'm going to remove this S, right? So let's try to see the literal segment to see that whether this can match, right? So if I click on send, so we got a 404 not found. So the literal segments has to match exactly. But the case doesn't really matter because we're using a lowercase e, but the template, okay, the template is also lowercase e. But if I try to use uh, uppercase e here, I can still get a 200 okay response with the correct message over here, right? So the case is insensitive. But if I do something like this, right, and then click on send, you can see that we got a 404 not found, which means there's no match, okay? But if I add something here, I get add another required root parameter, and I'm gonna call it position. Now, if I run it with debug mode, let's run it, okay? And then go to here and click on send. Going back, pay attention here, we got two root parameter segments, and that is going to go into the Contacts object. So quick watch and then go to request, open it up, go to root values. So you can see comp equals to two. And there's no surprise. We see position one, zero, two. ID A, B, C. Well, it's the reversed order, but that's because here, first one is one, zero, two, second one is A, B, C, and that they're all mapped to this position correctly. So 102 map to position, ABC map to ID. All right, so in this video, you have learned the required root parameter concept, right? We have the root template concept, first of all, over here. And the root template has the literal part as well as the parameter part, variable part. And a required root parameter is specified with a curly brace and the name of the parameter inside it. And in order to map or match this root template, the literal part has to match exactly. And the parameter part doesn't really matter, but there has to be the same number of segments. We also talk about the differences between root parameter and query string. Root parameter is cleaner. It's better for SEO, search engine optimization, and it's user friendly. So that's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know if not. I will see you in the next one.